Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to use a playlist in FL Studio. This is part of a larger tutorial series that I'm doing in collaboration with EDM Studio, and it'll be doing, there'll be much more, there's so many more videos about uh, how to handle the beginner aspects of FL Studio and going over things that people might not have necessarily known. So, this is about the, the playlist. Now, in the first video of this series, I talked about how uh, FL Studio works in that it's a pattern-based thing where you make the individual patterns and then you arrange them all in the playlist. So the playlist is where you arrange all your patterns. Like so, I have your uh, thing that I did in the previous video. With some added embellishments to sort of illustrate what else you can put in the playlist. So on, on, on top of having patterns, you also put in your automation and audio clips that you have. Uh, so let's talk about actually doing that. So in, um, in the first, in the first video in the series, I made a couple of, I made a couple of simple patterns and then I put them in the playlist. And the way that this works is that you have your writing tools, which are the, the pencil and the brush In the pencil, you put one, put, um, that's the brush. Indeed, the pencil, you put one down and you drag it around that's how that works. And then the brushes, you put one down and you paint it and then you get a whole bunch that are all selected together. So that when you are done painting it, you can grab it and move it around as one big unit. So that can be handy. Right-clicking will delete whatever you put down, provided you're using these particular tools. So what determines what you put down, uh, you know, is what you last, what you last clicked on. So if I click on this pattern, I'll put that there. If I click on this pattern, put it there, so on and so forth. Automation clip, yep. Audio clip, yep. So how do you, how do you, what's, what, like, what's the first one you put down? How do you know which one's the first one? Well, if I click on the pattern indicator up here, like if I select pattern four, and put it down suddenly that's pattern four so that's kind of what that how that works so you you can go on you, you make your pattern you write you the stuff down and you go into playlist and i click on that for safety because sometimes it's not going to be there and then boom you got your pattern and then um my particular my personal workflow that i work with is that i tell i generally use the playlist as kind of a giant palette um i'll do lots of experiments and lots of work where i'll just have just a huge mess of stuff i'm off on one side and then i'll have the actual song on the other side and then i'll, I'll be messing with crap and then like, okay so this this whole this whole thing this is this huge mess this whole thing is where i want to go in here and then i'll put it there and then copy it and i'll be you know what the song is and um if you don't want to do that though you could put down the thing go up here and you can do select source pattern and it'll show you different patterns you can also do that for uh automation clips select source channel there's only two going on here and same thing with audio clips, although I believe there's only one. There's two. Right. So that's how you sort of, that's how you pick your weapons, so to speak. And then you place them as any way you will. Now, any way you will is kind of interesting because you can really do whatever, you can put them wherever. Like There are tracks, as you can see. And at first look, you might be thinking, why the hell are there tracks? Just by the way this is organized. Because really... You could put things wherever you damn well please, and for people coming from other DAWs, digital, digital, digio, digital audio workstations, um, you're, they're probably they're just losing their, losing their minds because they don't know that what they're doing, what they put down, is has any semblance on where it goes out. They just don't. It's confusing, and I understand that. Also, people who come from older versions of FL but are used to the pattern blocks, which are only ever one pattern per block and that was actually how you they listed patterns and that's if you're new to fl and you have no idea what that means that's not a problem it's probably better that you don't because it'll just confuse you and i feel bad for people who really 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 liked the pattern blocks because that's not what the devs are doing anymore i used to be one of them i have been using fl since version 4 so i had to deal with that and i did however you can make it like that um it's not like that by default however but you, you can Make it like that if you know how. And how you do this is you right click on the track and then you go straight to lock to content. And what this will do is if I, if I do it to these guys, this is the lock will show up. And what this will do is it means that while the others that aren't locked to content, I can put wherever I want anywhere. If I click on here without changing what's in the brush, like I'm not clicking on something and then bringing it up there it will only put down what's on these tracks. So these tracks are now only these patterns. And um, not only are they, but it's, a, it's a, there's an interesting distinction. They're only that, that source, which is to say, 
um, if I were to lock this guy to content, loading, okay, it will, um, it's locking it to this particular source, which is to say this clip. But you can also, you can still edit the clips. And then you can make different clips that are like di differently organized from the original and put them wherever you want. And then I'll still fly. And that's because it's still the same source. There's there's three as you can, there's now three variations of this clip in this track, but it's still the same. It's from the same clip, and so you can you can do stuff like that. So that's useful for like if I want to make additional edits, like I want to do some kind of crazy automation for something. Someone's talking to me for something, and then uh, I'll just bring it over here, and now I have what's essentially a new pattern, a new automation pattern, but it's still the same source. And so it's still, so this whole track that I've set here ends up being just the track devoted to this, this automation parameter. And so that I, I find out that I, that you could probably make a good workflow out of that. Even if I don't necessarily ever do that, John is messaging, messaging me. I shall talk to John in a second. Um, so yes, that's how, that's how you would make uh, the playlist work more for you in the track format. If that's what you're used to. I am personally a firm believer in everything everywhere because I'm, I mean, I'm used to it. I've used, like I said, FL since version four. So I am super familiar with, uh, how things are supposed to go and how they're routed so that I'm not, I'm not losing my mind over the tracks, not being tracks. Although I, I too was very kind of surprised that they included tracks because I was kind of like, that's not what they are though. They're not tracks, but this is, this is, this is FL's, um, attempt at making FL image lines attempt at making FL more, approachable from other DAWs because they understand that their interface is very, very different from how other DAWs work, which is a good thing in terms of being unique and special little snowflake, but also just kind of weird when other people are trying to do something and they can't because it's just not used to the UI. And the reverse is kind of true from for DAWs. Like, I, I can't use other DAWs. I can't. I'm just bad at it. So that's what that is. So you, um, other options in here include various size options. There's a whole performance setting thing, which is all about performance mode in FL, which I will do a video about, just not now. Um, your various tools, like I, I talked about um, the brush and the uh, pencil. Delete tool is, is if for some reason you don't want to delete things by right clicking and you want to do it very manually, you can do that. The mute tool, um, what this does is it will mute whatever you draw on it. And then if you, you can also unmute it kind of deal like that. Mute and unmute, but that's not, that's not right clicking, and clicking. That's that's clicking, and then clicking again. Right clicking will delete things, so keep that in mind. Um, however, you can do that without actually accessing that tool. If you have a, the pencil or the brush open and you hit the right Alt key, that becomes the mute tool now. So that's that can be particularly handy if that's what you want to do. Um, there are also sh uh, keyboard shortcuts to these things. They're they're listed up here, and this bar up here. The, this is the information bar. And then this will tell you what the um, the hotkey is. If you have a uh, typing piano keyboard engaged, and what this will do is, uh, if I have like a, that's that's how I preview sounds. Like if I'm making a bass, I'll, I'll just kind of sit there, and uh, that's how I'll, I'll deal with it. But if you do have that engaged, all your hotkeys are off. So that's important to keep in mind. Then we have the slip edit tool which is pretty uh, pretty standard kind of uh, within clip editing source uh, editing option. Uh, it's pretty common among um, editing software in general, like video and on audio and stuff like that. And what this does is it lets you um, move the clip around inside the clip. So like if I, if I wanted to, at the end of this, have that crazy bit of um, automation that I have way at the end, I can grab it and find it. And then there it is. What this is, and then this clip is its own separate thing, but I didn't have to actually zoom out the whole way. And then other uh, behaviors include that if I grab the end of it, it'll actually pull out the end of the clip and keep the end where the, the set, the point is, and slip the rest out from the other side. This is different from where if, it, if I were just to grab it and resize it. And cut tool, grab it, and then if you click and drag, you get this, this nice little blue bar, and that's where you'll cut things. You can cut things straight in a line like so, or you can cut things at an angle, which will create uh, not uh, non-snapped cuts like so. And then if you hit shift, it will only do straight cuts. And that's pretty helpful if I say so. And now if you right click it, you get this red line. And what does that do? And what this does is if you make a cut, it will automatically delete the smallest part of this cut. Now this is helpful for like, if you have like this thing going on where I wanted this clip to be to start at this particular event and not at the beginning of the clip. 
And so I moved it over, and that's fine. But if I didn't want that tail to be there, if I right-clicked it and did that, and it saves me from having to, you know, cut it and then grab the tool and delete it. So that's what that does. And we have the select tool, which is, uh, a, you know, you select stuff, but you can you can access that by uh, hitting control with the, your draw tools, and you select stuff. And that's what, that, that's what control does. Um, Alt, when you're drawing, uh, will turn off snap. So snap uh, options are accessible from the top here. This is the main snap. You get you can set your snap to these various things. Uh, line is where it'll snap to the visible lines. So here it's doing uh, quarter bars. And if I zoom in, you get extra ones. Now you're doing eighth bars and then sixteenths. Kind of deal. If I zoom out far enough, it will uh, near be half, uh, half bars. So that's what line means. And now... Uh, you can make the playlist either follow the main snap or you can have it actually have a different snap from the main snap. And uh, I typically keep it uh, for the playlist to keep it uh, in the line setting for the main because if I want to if I want to do more close editing, I can zoom in and then hit alt and then just move it around like so. So you might have noticed that if I did that, though, it very clearly snaps. It's snapping to something. And what, why is that? And that has to do with the uh, PPQ or pulses, pulses per quarter is what that means. And because this is the maximum zoom in distance right now. And it's because right now the PPQ, if we go to options, uh, file settings or not options, project settings, general, then we have time base or PPQ time base is set to 96. You can go all the way up to 960, which is a whopping 10 times deeper zoom distance. And now, as you can see, when I zoom in, you can get quite close to things. And for audio editing, this is pretty helpful. If you don't, for some reason, want to do all your edits in something like Edison, which is a much deeper audio editor than the playlist just is by itself. But this can do pretty good things. This is pretty fine for like your basic sample editing kind of thing. So that's what that does. Um, downsides to having a larger PPQ is that it might increase your CPU usage of just playing the track. So um, if you set that up pretty high and you're suddenly having issues, that that's why. That's why you're having issues. Um, so I'm gonna keep that there just for fun. Uh, and so we have a zoom. We have the the zoom tool, which if you click on it, it'll zoom straight, kind of deal. And then if you click and drag and do this, it'll actually do its best to make what you're what you're clicking and dragging to be the focus of the next zoom level. So it'll really really zoom in on stuff, like so. So it's like I I wanna I wanna edit this this audio file. Bam! Now it's like what I'm looking at. That's kind of what that does. Um. You can also see me zooming around by uh, scrolling, and that's because if you hit you, whatever you have selected, if you hit control and scroll, then you are going to zoom zooming around. And then without without hitting control, scroll moves up and down. And if you middle 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 click and grab, you can grab it around, and that's fairly important. Alt scrolling will uh, change the uh, vertical zoom, and alt click and drag will change zoom on the fly. Now, um, note how when I hit control and I zoom, it's going to zoom into where my cursor is. So like right now it's zooming in there, and right now it's going to zoom over here. So like that's that's what that does. Important stuff. And then this last one is the playback tool. So what this does is it will uh, focus on whatever you're clicking on and play back just that. Bit. That's what that does kind of useful it's sort of doing the job of um muting everything except for that one thing you want to play which you can do manually or you can do it like i just did with the thing <laughs> handy stuff okay so that's it for these and let's talk about these three things here so these these are different options for um the three main aspects of what you can put in the playlist, which are the pattern clips, automation clips, and audio clips. Pattern clip options are different visualization uh, cues for what's in the pattern clips. And um, uh, automation clips here are, are different tool or different settings for the editing of automation clips. So uh, by default, an automation clip, if you uh, you put the, you right click down and put the point, you can click the point and drag it around and then right click the point, you get various options. I'm gonna talk more about how automation works in an actual automation tutorial. Um, so then well, here we have slide by default engaged. And what this means is if I click this point and move it, it will slide all the other points that are already there. So that, that can be good. And that can also be really bad. So if you turn off slide, it will not do that. 
there you go. Now, uh, step editing, um, it gives you this mouse instead of having a point. So instead of right-clicking to put down a point, you just click and a point appears. If you click and drag, you can draw points. And then if you uh, hold down Alt to remove the snap, you can draw very fine points. And um, then if you right-click, it'll delete the points. And that's what step editing means. That term, step editing, is actually used on all FL plugin stuff and image line stuff. So like, like if I go on to a, uh, a Harmer channel, and I have these things, like the, this is the, uh, the the line editors, like did you'll see that are like that. And if you have, see over here, we have the step and the slide options and also snap and freeze. And you can do that kind of stuff too. So that's what that does. Now I gotta undo that because it's not by default in the undo lists. Yeah, close enough. That's still here, so let's go back to killing it. Now it's dead. And over here we have zero cross and stretch. So zero cross what is interesting because what this does, if I turn it on, it will mean that whenever I make a cut in an audio file, I make a cut, bam. You see how it moved it. Now what what because I have I tried to cut on the line here, and then what it what it did is it moved the cut over to the nearest point where the audio, the waveform, crosses the zero point. And this ensures that the ending ending of the previous clip and the beginning of the new clip that you created because you made this cut will not cause an audible click when you uh, play it by itself, which is assuming what you're doing because you made a cut there. And this is important uh, just for editing purposes because if I, if I were to not do that, if I had not zero cross on it, just cut it wherever I wanted to cut, and I tried to play this clip by all its lonesome, like it would... See, and then uh, hold on, I'm going I'm to turn on zero cross again. Doink. Just for some random point. And I'm going to bring these together. And see that difference right there? That difference will create an audible click that it will be very out of place for something like a smooth female vocal, but just file is. So editing wise, that's a useful tool to have available to you. Now, I have stretch engaged. So if you see here, when I'm, I'm trying to resize it, and it's not resizing, it's actually moving it. And it's going to screw everything up. And that's because this is what stretch does. It, instead of resizing the clip, it will actually stretch it. That's what stretch means. And stretch is not usually on by default, I think. It might be, though. But um, when it's not engaged, it'll, it'll resize it just like if you would if you were using any other clip, including pattern clips. There's not really a stretch option for pattern clips, although there is a cool thing you can do in the uh, piano roll itself that's kind of like it. But um, I will talk about that on the day that we're discussing actual piano rules. So piano rules, not piano rules. I am a classical instructor. So that's what that means. And just remember these because sometimes you set them and you forget that they're there. I've done that and they can cause havoc and catastrophe. <laughs> all right. So other fun things in the playlist includes like now that you have like all these things, like you want to mess with the patterns. So um, all the, the patterns and the playlist, the playlist, the automation clips and the audio clips all have these buttons on the upper left that are options. Uh, some of the options over, overlap, like the preview, we'll just play the sound, and uh, source options will play it. I mean, those earlier. Edit pattern is specific for the pattern, because if you click on it and a pattern, it'll actually bring up what is in the pattern so that you can mess with it. Um, renaming it, uh, and then make unique is fun. Okay, so... This is uh, the drum pattern, right? Yeah. So then I want to say I want to make a variation. I can either make a new pattern and copy everything and do it fine, or I can make unique. And now there's actually two patterns. This is this this whole separate pattern. So I can actually make this a uh, a variation. So like. That's what that's for. Uh, a variation of that option it also exists for uh the automation clips and also for audio clips. Now, um, also a fun thing you can do with um, Make Unique is that I, if I want to, I can make the, the pattern just that length. However, note that I also made this in the sequencer. So the fact that I did that means that if I make it unique and it's a different pattern, it will actually move everything into the, the piano roll for that section. So it's still, it's, still the same, it's still the same pattern, it's just in the piano roll now, which can sometimes be kind of weird. Um, so another example of this would be like if I wanted uh, to make an edit of just this half. Now, now this is only that part of the pattern. It's not gonna, it's not gonna show the uh, to the ending tonic part of the original pattern. 
it's just gonna be this bit. So that's how cool the make unique function is. And audio clips have a whole wealth of different options for them. So uh, we have um, edit sample, which will open the sample up into an Edison, ch Edison channel, which is a much more in-depth audio editor, like I mentioned before. And you can zoom in at the sample level if you feel like it and just screw with stuff. Or you can go uh, pitch correct sample, which will open it up in a new tone, which I'm not going to do because it's kind of weird um, and I might screw with things. But I will talk about uh, pitch correction in its own video at some point. Um, it's like tempo, it's a tempo and different quantizing options. And then some different on automatic automation options that you can do. And then we have make unique a sample. Then we also have make unique. So what's the difference between that? Well, if we do, if we have, they take this file, for example, I'm going to go over here and do this. So we have these two files. If I were to make this one unique, it's now number two. So this is actually sourced from the same file. It's loading the same file twice, but that means that whatever change I make to this file will not happen to the other files like so. So this is like, because if I did do like a time stretch change to the original file, it will change every instance of the file. And I don't necessarily want to do that for what I already have in the playlist for like this track that I'm working on. So having uh, a new file loaded, it's not actually doubling the like the, the file usage because it's still the same file, but um, that's what that does. But then there's the other one, which is make unique a sample, which is to say that like, I want to edit um, like these bits and I want this bit loaded into something else, but only as that bit. So then what we'll do is we go, we're going to make unique, that's edit sample, don't need to do that. We go make unique a sample, and then it'll save it. And now this thing is only, only that bit. It's that entire bit, and this is a whole new file. And um, it's saved in the same folder that it, the original was in, and it's called a different part. As you can see, I actually did this twice already for different videos. And um, so that's what that does. Also delete. Select all similar clips, all good stuff. So speaking of similar clips, let's look at um, an option we can do with a track over here called uh, Merge Pattern Clips. So let's say, for example, like we have this bit here. We have um, the original pattern, which was uh, the, the the minor three to the minor seven up to the tonic, and then we have four and then minor three and then tonic. So this is actually a, a, a very a much longer progression than in the original pattern. Let's say, but let's say I want all that in one pattern. I can go over here and go to merge pattern clips and then pff, now it's its own pattern. It's all there, all just by itself. I actually kind of like having this open like that. So that's what that's for. Now, um, not much else to say about that particular thing. I mean, you, you can do that for anything you want and uh, it'll do it. And by anything, I mean things that are patterns. I won't do anything to audio clips. There's also fun, uh, chopping options you get i think that's just for audio clips yeah so like these are basically just auto chops for stutters and stuff and they'll do uh th these slicing options are actually uh, reminiscent of what happens when you use the slicer channel or the slice axe channel and um i'll talk about those as individual plugins in later videos so we'll, we'll worry about that later i believe i've gotten everything that needs you need to like get in order to make this work like a lot of the stuff that we talked about are kind of advanced things but they're, they're things that people tend to use kind of on accident that sort of screws things up and um, we do have some other options in the uh, drop down menu here you have quantized start times which is cool it could be useful for having audio clips and stuff like that you could change all kinds of colors and stuff on things and also edit like uh what like visually all of huge huge range of things which don't I don't know what that was, but it don't necessarily matter uh, in terms of like audio quality, or whatever, but just for your own workflow, whatever you like looking at more can work better. And you have the snap, the snap option. Cause you can get that, uh, we have different, um, select options. Let's select all select by selected source invert selection kind of deal. Select the wrong time selection. It's kind of, and then a magic lasso option, which is cool. And groups and whatever's kind of deal. So what's interesting is that, um, Now they're a group. Check that out. It's kind of like a permanent selection is what that does. It's not a tool I tend to use very often myself, but you might find use for it. Mm -hmm, different zoom levels. And as you can see, these all have um, different 
hotkeys. That's what they're called. I use words. And then time markers. Okay, so um, this is actually kind of important. So we can we can add different markers, and uh, we can add one every every so much whatever. And then when you add a marker, uh, marker, this shows up here. And now I've actually set the uh, the visual color change to be set to marker. That's why it's doing that. And that's a performance mode um, kind of deal. So if I went to time segments, four bars, that's kind of what I wanted to see. Now the marker doesn't really do much. So that's what the marker does. However, there's a different kind of time marker, and this is the loop. The play song loop. There's make loop, which is not necessary, and then play song loop. And that's what this does. So what this thing does is that when it, when you reach the end of your song, you can get rid of this. It'll, it'll loop automatically to this point, regardless of where you have um, your set time. So like... <laughs> If you bring it to the end, the beginning rather, it will repeat there. But if you bring it to a point that's after the song, after the actual actual content, it'll end the song. So this is actually where this is how you make the track determine where the song ends. If you didn't have this here, it would, and you went to render the track, um, it would actually interpret wherever the last bit of actual physical content was to be the end, which is mostly true a lot of the time. But as you saw, there was a, an effect tail at the end there. There was a delay and reverb going on that made the song, the actual sound of the song and uh, continue past the end of the song. And that can sometimes screw up the uh, rendering process. If it just cuts off there, it sounds bad. So and there's options to deal with that. But um, the easiest one is just to make sure that the song is as long as it needs to be by putting this end here. Um, in saying that, it reminded me about something that I wanted to say about something that was kind of important. Oh yeah, stop the set, set time. So um, you notice how when I put the indicator someplace and I hit play, like if I put it here, that little kind of like a ghost bar, like a ghost arrow shows up. And what that is, is it's determining that when I hit when I hit the space bar again, which stops it, it will return to that position that you hit. Let's see if I hit the stops button, it will also do that. And um, this is an option that you do turn on, turn off by actually right clicking the stop button. It will remember seek time. If you have that turned off, every time you stop it, it will go back to the beginning of the track. <laughs> Actually, you saw me point this way, and that's because that's where it is in my view, but I just realized that it's probably actually this way for you guys. I'll have to check that later. So that's pretty important. This is actually a relatively new feature that they included that I took to right away because it's great. Uh, and again, okay, so looping. So um, the reason why I like it is because this means that if I'm adding something here, I can just put it there and then I edit, edit. Instead of having to select a loop section like that. Now the way this works is that you double click on the on the time section up here, which by the way is enumerating the uh, bar count. So like over here is 39 or 29 bars, 30 bars and stuff like that. So if you click and drag, it'll create, it'll snap. It's snapping it by default. And you can also hit alt, which will unsnap and you can snap back. Uh, once you created this, you can also right click the sides of it on the time section. Because if you right click uh, underneath, this is actually the marker section which uh, you may have noticed that it didn't exist until I put this here and it used to be just uh, half the size and that's pretty uh, usual. So um, it'll, if you right click it, you can actually uh, edit where the edges, edges are. And you're seeing how it's actually selecting things. It makes, us, makes a selection and then it also creates the looping section. So this is for like if you're recording, you can do overdubbing or if you're editing, you can listen to it a lot and that kind of deal. Now, um, this interferes with another thing that I haven't talked about yet that I should, and that's the uh, control B option. So normal copying and pasting, you know, control C, copy, control V, paste. So that's kind of cool. Now, if I wanted to um, control, uh, there's another option called control B, which pastes it immediately after the content that you, that you selected. So if I selected this and I want to control B it, it puts it at the very end of it there. But if I were to select this, it's actually still puts it there because that's where this content ended was actually at the end of this thing here. And it's a very specific rule set about how that works. And I bring that up along with the uh, looping section here because if I select like this, I want to control B it, it brings it there because it actually interprets th this whole thing 
to to be the selection still, no matter what you select inside it, which can be obnoxious if you're not prepared for that. But I have prepared you for it, so now it should not be as obnoxious. I hope. Yeah. Okay. That actually was everything that I want to talk about. So if you have any questions about anything that I have talked about or perhaps that I've left out, let me know and I will answer your question to the best of my ability. Um, and as usual, have a nice day. And I look forward to making so many more of these videos because unlike the how to base stuff where I only come up with a video whenever I come up with something cool to show, um, there are like just thousands of things I could talk about in great length and depth about the beginning usage of FL Studio that um, people should probably know when they're using FL. So yeah, uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I said that already, but I'm going to keep saying it because by God, you should have a nice day. Everyone should have a nice day. Have the nicest day. John is still talking to me. That is John. I will talk to John now. Have a nice day.